Let's dive into relative clauses so we can see how the semantics works with traces and movements. So if we take our phrase that we had in the last video, man who Grace loves, we can write our CP who Grace loves as follows. So we're going to have a CP with who, our relative pronoun at the top, and it's coming from the original position that was being moved or deleted for man. So this is a man who Grace loves. Man is coming out of Grace loves the man or a man. And it's going up to the front. So who is basically what the movement pattern is doing and it's being linked with man. Okay, we're also going to have a C which is going to be filled with the complementizer that. Now, if we have a WH pronoun, the that is not going to be pronounced. But if we say that, then the WH pronoun is not going to be pronounced. And we just put, we symbolize that with a line through it. Now, this comes from German, where in German, you can have both positions filled. So because English is a Germanic language, we would assume that we have a very similar structure. And then within our complementizer phrase, as a sister to C, we have our original sentence S, which would be Grace loves ti for whatever the trace is so how are we going to deal with this trace how are we going to deal with the fact that we have this and then what is who going to do for our structure so what we're going to do is we're going to treat traces as variable entities what this means is if we take a look at the types for this so loves is an eet -E our verb phrase will be an et our s will be t grace will be an e and we're going to treat our trace as an e as well and for its meaning, we're just going to give it a variable like x, and then we're going to give it the same subscript. So if we have trace1, we're going to call it x1. If we have trace k, we're going to call it xk. And then as we go through up our tree, grace loves t1 is going to be true, if and only if. We're going to say grace loves, and then we're going to put our variable in there, x1. So this is our inside sentence, but the issue is at this stage, we don't know what x1 is and in fact we don't have anything out front to bind it so we don't have like a lambda x1 out so how are we going to insert uh, an object into that position and how are we going to combine it with the noun which would be man because that's also an et so how does an et and a t come together so these are the questions that we have so what is that going to do when we say that grace loves we're not really doing anything to the truth conditions. So if we think about the sentence in the C bar, these can both be true if Grace loves X1, the trace, whoever that is at this point. So whether this is pronounced or unpronounced, C is always gonna have the same function, which is just going to be lambda P dot P. It's going to take a type T and it's going to push out a type T. So that isn't really doing anything. And when we think about the meaning of that grace loves or just grace loves because it's unpronounced, we wouldn't expect a different meaning either. Now, as soon as we get to the CP, this is where our WH pronoun is going to have an interesting effect. So when we say the mm, who grace loves, we do expect here to get an ET. Because if we think about this, we would want something like lambda x1 dot g loves x1. Because when we say man who grace loves, we want x1 as a man and g loves x1. That's how our um, predicate modification is going to work. So unlike other things that we've seen so far, we're not actually going to give a type or a meaning to who itself. But if you would expect it to be a type, you'd want it to be something like T-E-T. -E so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce this new thing called predicate abstraction. So basically, what's going to happen is if you have some sort of function like uh, G of X1 and X1 is inside and it's free, what we can do at the next step is we can bind it. So if it's free, what we can do is we can introduce a lambda X1 and that will do the binding. So we can go from the C bar being true if and only if G loves X1 to the CP level where now what we're doing is we're removing the truth from it and we're introducing our abstraction on X1 so we can fill in that direct object. So this is called predicate abstraction. This is where it takes uh, this is where it takes place in the tree. 
and this is what we need to write for it. So I want to show you another example for kid who eats M&Ms just to do the whole thing. And this is a little bit different because we have subject extraction. So this is kid and then we have who eats M&Ms with the subject being moved up. So kid who eats M&Ms, let's start from the bottom. Uh, M&Ms, I'm just gonna call this M, so this will be M going up the tree. Eats will be lambda y dot lambda x dot x eats y. I'm not gonna put these on every single node. So when we fill in at the VP, we're gonna get lambda x dot x eats M. Now for T1, we're just gonna call this X1. So this sentence is going to be true if and only if X1 eats M. Now, as we go up the tree, we see our complementizer that. Now, this is just going to be lambda p dot p. So when we do our substitution, as we've seen so many times before, we're just going to get literally the same thing back. So one if and only if x1 eats m. Now, when we get to the who operator, this is where we can do abstraction. So I see that we have who index with one, which means that if x1 is free, then we can bind it. So this is what this is going to allow us to do. So our CP at this stage is going to now be lambda x1 dot x1 eats m for m and m's. Okay, now when we have kid, what are we doing? And I want to show something a little bit different here. So I'm going to say that kid is lambda y dot y is a kid because I'm using different variables here. So I'm using lambda y's and I'm using lambda x1's. What the predicate modification rule allows us to do is to pick a new variable. So what we're really doing here, and I'm gonna show the full step for predicate modification, is we're basically saying this is going to be lambda u, where we have kid and u being applied, and we have whatever our CP is. So uh, let's call this, well, it's a little bit hard to come up with a nice notation for this, but let's just say the CP with U applied as well. So what's going to happen is kid U is going to become U is a kid and lambda X1 dot X1 eats M is going to become U eats M, but with the predicate modification, we're binding them both together with our lambda dot U. So this up here is the official rule that lets us merge when we have different variables. Uh, and that gives us the same result that we want. So we're just changing variables there, but the meaning is exactly the same. And this is a full example of a relative clause in English.